All right, let's talk a little bit about the older adult, chapter 31. All right. This slide right here is just to let you see that individuals are living to 104, 105 years old. This is the reason why there's such a shortage in the healthcare field because people are living longer and longer and longer. The longer someone lives, the more issues physically that they have. So with the older generation living on and on and on, and then you're having babies come into the world, the population is just exploding. And this would be why, again, that we need um, extra nurses. All right. With the older generation, we have to worry about late life mental illness. You think about it, all your friends are dying. You're getting old. You may feel like you're young on the inside, but you're old on the outside. So that would be a reason to be depressed. Be anxious. Have the delirium that is secondary to general medical conditions. We have the dementia that comes in to play. Remember we talked about um, that age was a big factor in dementia. Then we have, of course, you're depressed, you have anxiety. A lot of times alcohol comes into play. And then the older generation is in a lot of pain. You know, they have arthritis and whatnot. So that also adds to the anxiety and the depression. All right. With depression, you have to worry about suicidality. Why in the world would an older person want to live in the world without all their friends, without all their people? They're falling apart anyway. They um, might as well be dead. These are some of the things that the older generation could possibly be thinking about. Why am I here? Why do I want to be here? With the older generation, though, they start thinking about how they feel about harming themselves or taking their own life. And then you added, uh, you have to add for the stuff in the news about, I guess it's called premeditated uh, doctor assisted suicide. So you have to, to really focus and think about and find out about how these older generations or how any generation feels about dying. How do they spiritually feel about dying? Do they have a spiritual thought about dying? Because a lot of times if they believe, you know, I'll go to hell if I kill myself, then that would be a positive factor for them to be safe. Always worry about suicide when you're dealing with depression. All right, box 31.6, there's that uh, geriatric depression scale. This is one of those tools that you use to talk to the geriatrics about how they think and feel about depression. Pain. A lot of times as you get older, you have the inability maybe to hear so well or you know your speech becomes effective. There are two things. One's called the Wong Baker Faces Pain Scale, and one is the Pain Assessment for Dementia. Both of those are used for the older generation. Here we have the Baker um, Faces Scale. You have the smiley, it doesn't hurt at all, and then you're down here with the frowny face and the tears. That is the... Um, way they say that they are hurting horribly. You explain what this is. 
you show it to them, they can even point to whichever face they feel. They don't even have to talk. You also think about somebody grimacing, somebody guarding their body. Those are all uh, also ways that you can assess for pain without getting a verbal rating. There's also the dementia pain scale. This is how you would uh, figure out if someone with advanced dementia had pain. Now keep in mind, we're talking about the older generation. These can be used for younger generations as well, but this module is focused on older adults. Now, what are their health concerns? Finances, caregiver burden, We've got that ageism. And the ageism is when people talk negative about the older generation. Their public policies about the older generation that's negative. And then there's research. Now, ageism, discrimination against older people due to negative and inaccurate stereotypes. The interesting thought about this statement is that not only does society speak negatively about the older people, they speak negatively about themselves as well. I'm not going to that uh, old folks home because all they do is play cards. That's no business for me. All of those people are just old just old. So see, an older person can speak negatively about themselves too. All of that is called negative ageism. And a lot of time it is inaccurate. Here's a nice list. The facts are things that are positive, legitimate things about aging. And the bottom are the myths. Then we have the healthcare decision making, several modules back. We talked about advanced directives. We talked about guardianship. You remember that advanced directive is something that you write out giving instructions on what your healthcare providers in your family are supposed to do in case you are unable to take care of yourself. Who would you give a copy of this to? Family, doctor, hospital, the list goes on and on. Anybody that might be in a position that they would need to know what you want in case you have a medical emergency. And then you also have a court appointed guardianship, say, Uncle Joe wants to take you off a of life support, and Aunt Sue does not feel like that that's what needs to happen, and they're fighting back and forth. While you're sitting right there on child I mean, on, um, on life support, just wilting away then the court could get a guardianship over you so they could make the decision. All right, here we are assessing. Now, when you assess the older adult, if you don't remember anything else, anything else, you are going to introduce yourself, tell them your name, and ask them what they would like to be called. Ask them what they want to be called. Tell them your name. That is the most important part of the assessment, in my opinion. That is my favorite. The rest of this uh, assessment and um, interview process, I would be familiar with. But keep in mind, it's very important for you to ask those people um, what they want to be called and tell them your name. Then, 
the interview again. This is on box 317, uh, helpful techniques for inter interviewing. Um, be familiar with this box. It's on the page 574. Then we have the medication ca uh, cautions. Because the older adult has so many medical conditions, they may go to a cardiologist, they may go to a foot doctor, they may go to a prim primary care physician. You have all this polypharmacy where they have all these different doctors, they have all these different pharmacies. So it is very hard a lot of times for the nurse or the facility to get an active um, listing of their medication. The important thing to do is to discuss these medications with the client. Make sure that you know where they get their medication filled so you can reconcile it appropriately. You need to remind them they need to keep it in the correct boxes or containers and make sure that they are labeled properly so they know what they are taking. Now, when you're prescribing medication, you have, let's say, I take a stimulant for ADD or ADHD. Well, that stimulant gives me high blood pressure. So then I had to take something for high blood pressure. But if I don't take the stimulant, then I don't need, don't have high blood pressure. But if I take the high blood pressure medicine, then I'll have low blood pressure. So it turns into this really back and forth situations with medications. So it's very, very important for you to educate your patient on the medication that they take. Last module, we talked about these three issues. The metabolic syndrome, neuroleptic malignant syndrome, and the anticholinergic toxicity. You need to make sure that you are um, familiar with these again for this module. I have listed them in the next three slides. There's that metabolic syndrome, there's that anticholinergic toxicity. This is where you have to make sure what kind of medicines that they're taking and that they do not have a lot of anticholinergic medications all stacked together because then you will have a um, severe issue. We have the NMS that we need to look out for. This is also when you stack a whole bunch of different kind of medicines on top of each other. What are we going to do to help these people? There we are being empathetic again. We're going to listen to these people. We're going to urge them to tell their feelings. We are going to help them problem solve. We're going to educate them about their medications and their therapy. And then there we are at the end, making sure that they do have psychological therapy.